Sky Skimpy, and on this episode of Legion of Bass, I got my good buddy Kevin with me, and we're going to do an Ask an Angler 8. I'm going to ask him eight questions about a specific uh, technique, and this technique is going to be top water, specifically walking baits. So, you ready for your eight questions? Sure. Okay, question number one, which brand do you recommend, or which ones do you use? Well, I, I, I'm very specific as far as brands. I, I prefer the... Uh, Super Spook Junior okay. by Hedden. Um, it's small bait. It's a uh, cast really well, and uh, uh, it's really really easy to walk. It's a good, but a good beginner's bait. Uh, the other one I would be would be Lucky Craft Sammy. Okay. And it's just got a different uh, sound to it, and a different walk to it. It more uh, it dances and sashays. It slides more than the, the Spook kind of jerks, where the the, the Sammy kind of does this instead. All right. Question number two. Okay. What size do you recommend? Um, pretty much all my, most of my walking baits in general are probably five, four and a half, five inches long. I think they're five eighths typically in, in weight, you know. And all right. About standard size, yeah. Question number three, what color? Um, natural colors. Um, I really, on my Sammy, I, I throw the, what's called the Aurora Blue. Looks like a kokanee, you know, uh, dark color on the back, um, or pearl or white belly. Um, if I'm in darker water or something like that, I'm trying to get a little more, I'll throw a bone color or something like that. It's a little brighter, uh, a little easier. And then of course at nighttime, I'll just throw black. Okay. Number four, uh, do you have any modifications or anything that you do to it? I change the hooks on every bait I buy. Okay. Uh, as far as shovel hooks are concerned. Uh, it's not as bad as it used to be, but that's where manufacturers try to uh, actually try to save their money on the bait is that they'll put cheap hooks on it. So I always change out the hooks and possibly the split rings too. Okay. And I always take the split ring off the front as well because I use a clip for all my baits. Uh, I still retie it all the time, but I just prefer the clip rather than the split ring. You don't have to worry about your line being into the little groove on the split. Yeah. All right. Question number five. Where do you fish it? Um, the, the spook walking style baits, I'm fishing. I'm fishing them on the outside of pad edges, the outside of dock edges. I do run them down the insides along the edges of docks. Um, but it depends on the cover that I'm fishing. Uh, if I'm fishing for smallmouth, I'll actually fish flats. And I'll fish out in about 10 to 12 feet of water in just the middle of nowhere, in nice graduating flats, and I'll throw out, and they'll come up out of 10 feet of water, and completely out of the water, and knock your bait. You know, it's fun. All right. So question number six: When do you fish it? Um, I'm actually a top water fanatic when it comes to that stuff, and I tend to fish it probably more than I should. First thing in the morning, I'm always fishing. I, I mean, it's probably the first bait I pick up, and especially this time of year. Um, but I've been known to fish it all the way through a hot summer day. Um, depends on the bite, of course. I mean, if I'm not getting bites on it within an hour, I'll put it down, and I probably won't pick it up the rest of the day. You know, but uh, if I'm getting hit on it, I'll fish it all day. Yeah, absolutely. Right on. Question number seven: How do you fish it? Uh, well, a walking bait is a learn a learn tactic for sure. Um, some baits walk easier than others. Like I said, the right. Super Spook Junior walks easier. Um, it's just, it's a rhythmic cadence. In fact, when I first used to, when I learned, I used to tap my foot in time with the, the walk just so I could keep it in time. Um, so just slow, steady cadence. I don't stop it. I don't speed it up, slow it down. If a fish hits it and misses it, I you, you keep it going at the same cadence. Um, it's very important actually, because a lot of times that fish will come back and hit it right after you it misses it. So. Um, yeah, just consistent walk. All right. Last question. Question number eight. What is your uh, typical setup? Line, rod, reel? Uh, it's kind of funny that you ask that, actually. I just recently changed back to what was, I call my old school setup. I used to throw uh, my bait on a six foot uh, medium. So I think it's a eight to 14 uh, bait casting rod with a six three reel on it. Um, but I was throwing it on a seven two. Uh, medium heavy because I was trying to get a little more distance and have a little more setting power yeah. But I found that um, it really changes the cadence of the bait because of the extra foot or so It changes when you're when you're walking the bait on how much that bait moves And I think I, I haven't been catching as many fish on it with the larger rod So I went back to the smaller rod to maybe slow it down and um, get a little more natural and not so large Walks and, and, yeah. and actions on it. So yeah right now. I think six to six and a half foot medium action it's treble hooks, so you want to have a, a little bit of a softer rod um, for it so that you don't lose fish uh, once you catch them. 
Uh, other than that, yeah, I run 10, 12 pound test uh, mono. I don't like braid for top water. Some guys do. Um, I find that it's just it's just more problems than anything, and I don't really need it. Yeah. Right on. Well, do you have anything else you want to add before we uh, close it out? Visit that guy Skimpy. <laughs> right on. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, you learned something. Thanks, Kevin, again for you know answering all the questions. Check out Legion of Bass. Check out that guy Skimpy. All right. Just push it. Just push it.